All right, you did a great job uh, a few weeks back when you did this, so why don't you give us the intro for our show? Um, I don't know, what's our show called? <laughs> Fathers of the Grind? Never mind. Okay. I just needed you're, a warm-up. You're up. fired. Never mind. <laughs> Welcome to... <coughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> the show... <laughs> well, like, I went to, like, breathe, and I sucked down... I don't know. Something. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who is your daddy? I am the father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things here. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? All right, so. Welcome to Fathers of the Grind with your host, Tim Nestor. I'll insert a crowd noise right there. Yeah, you got to do that because that was pretty good. And then you need to quietly and, and humbly say, and I'm Derek Teague. And I'm Derek Teague. Too hot for you. Too hot for you. All right, yeah, we are in episode 96 of Fathers of the Grind. You and I just talked way too recently. This doesn't feel good at all to talk to you this many times in a row. Well, in, this is your fault. 48 I'm going to blame you. This is totally my fault. Family schedules. You know what? I'm not going to go into it. It's just the way it worked out. But I will say that uh, I am very disappointed to have to tell you guys we will not be talking too much about Assassin's Creed Origins. We want to take a whole episode and really dive into it. I haven't played enough to do that. I'll talk a little bit about my first impressions of it, but we're just not there yet. So that'll be next week, unfortunately. But this week, uh, there is something that we've been wanting to talk about for a while anyway. So we'll dive into microtransactions. And also, I need your guys' help to make a decision about a major purchase coming up. So those are the things we'll cover this week. But before we get to that, Mr. Derek Teague, did did you guys go trick-or-treating last night? Are you one of those straight-edge Christian families who doesn't celebrate Halloween? Um, I'm hardly a Christian. I'm like borderline atheist, so I think I only call myself a Christian to trigger people. Um, does it work? It works. It really does. I mean, I had somebody tell me I'm going to hell this week, so actually two people, so that's pretty good. You're a Christian. Huh. You're fake. You're going to hell. All right, cool. Um, so, yeah, I celebrate it. I wasn't raised in a family that celebrated it. I don't care about it. Again, it has nothing to do with religious reasons. That's not how I work. I just like alcohol. Just don't care about it. Um, but my wife had scheduled us to go to a soccer or Ian's soccer team. They're all like real close. The parents, not me. I'm the square of the group. But um, they all had you know planned to hang out at one particular house, which actually ended up being pretty cool because. Um, Apparently, this is the place to be because parents were dropping off tons of kids. There was hundreds of people out on the street. They had, and this is not in like Hickville. This is in like a nice, richy, rich neighborhood. There was people driving with a truck, and on the back of their truck, they had one of those like beds, you know, uh, Whatever, I'm forgetting, of course, like I always do, forgetting the name. Like a, like a flatbed trailer? Yeah, like a trailer, and they had okay. people in, like, lawn chairs drinking yeah. and sitting back there and, and, you know, just hanging out. Like something you would see out in the country, you know, like a hay ride or something like that. It was basically what they were doing. Just, but it was just, a booze ride. Yeah, tons of people. Also, it was the first time I've ever gone to a area where we're celebrating Halloween, and they had basically... Almost every house had this set up where one section of the table was for kids and the other section was for adults. So there was a lot of alcohol, oh. a lot of adult beverages there. So um, needless to say, there was a lot the of adult drinks, drunk sure. people. Hmm. And at one point, all the soccer kids, all the kids on Ian's team, went inside the house and poured Sprite into little shot glasses and they all took shots. I'm like... You parents should all be so proud of yourselves. Losers. <laughs> Your kids weren't part of this, right? Because they're way above that. Ian was one of the main ones. I was like, yo, let's take a shot, Dad. I'm like, 
I'm 38 and I don't take shots, which is a lie because I ended up taking two shots last night. But Ooh. I normally don't. And then you don't remember the rest of the night, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, that's part of the reason why I only got four hours of sleep and it had nothing to do with like a hangover or getting drunk. I just had heartburn. It was like killing me. I was like, oh, my chest oh, is man. killing me. Man, you are so much older than me. I don't know what that feels like. That sounds awful. Yeah, I went to bed at 10 o'clock last night, woke up at 2, and my chest was killing me. And I'm like, I'm really exhausted. I, I'm going to go back to bed. And I couldn't fall asleep. I ended up logging on to Rocket League at like 4 in the morning and playing for like 2 hours before work. And the funny thing is, is if you play Rocket League at about 4 in the morning, you literally play the same people over and over. So yeah. there was a lot of verbal abuse between me and other players <laughs> because it was just the same guys who would end up in every other match yelling at each other. And you just kept telling everybody, I took two shots last night. <laughs> I got heartburn, you assholes. <laughs> I'm trying the best I can. Let me score. <laughs> <laughs> Let me in the net. <laughs> yeah, so that that was my my party. It was fun, but it's not my thing. You know, my personality is I would rather stay home. But you do anything? We did. We took the kids uh, just out and around our neighborhood. It was very quiet for the most part. But you just took them door took to door text. to try to get people saved. Is that what you're doing with your children already? Yeah. Yeah, we figured that the best way to open that conversation about God is to have the demigod Thor. Uh, with a <laughs> silver duct taped mallet <laughs> and a flimsy costume, he's usually the one that introduces the. Co no, we uh we went door to door with our superhero costumes, with well, the kids at least, and I so far I've taken probably two or three pieces of dad tax I call it. So I got my butterfinger here, ready to eat that. Uh, Whatever it is that you get to talk about. I hope about you're something. at least taking thirty percent of their candy. That's how it works. Oh yeah, they have no at nighttime. A lot of it disappears. But so our neighbors across the street and down a couple houses, they had a they were sitting at the front of their driveway. Which first of all, that's a win right there. You don't have to walk up to their door. Yeah, so yeah. That, They're already they're already up in our in our books. But they had a bunch of lights out there. They were all, they were all dressed up. They were sitting out there at lawn chairs and tables. They had uh, the radio on, just kind of playing general like kind of pop country music, whatever. And it was an older couple, and they had a giant bowl full of full size candy bars. They were by far the most popular folks in the entire neighborhood. Of course. And of course, they were. They know all the kids, and so they they weren't letting kids double up. But uh, but man, they they rule. That's life goals right there. But we had a, we had a lot of fun. We had uh, Iron Man, Venom. Who, by the way, Venom, for being so like mean and uh, and villainous, he certainly gets cold easily. Uh, but we mm. had Iron Man, we had Venom, we had Wolverine, <laughs> Thor, and at, it was supposed to be Elsa, but then she wanted to be Wonder Woman because all the other boys were. Super oh, awesome. I thought you were gonna tell me that one of them was a Buckeye because I was supposed to confront you on that, and I love how you had your wife defend you. I'm calling you out on Facebook, and you're like, well, we take hand-me-downs. I don't care about your wa wife telling me you guys take hand-me-downs. I didn't tell her to say Under anything. no circumstances ever, and I know Russell Brimer would agree with me, Brimer, Brimer, whatever, Imer, you don't wear Buckeye crap, and you don't put it on your children. Who, by First the way, all, I didn't know you had a black child, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> Here I am thinking Shut we up. have this yes. whole white supremacist thing going yes, on. Yes, you did. Also, <laughs> uh, I don't control what they wear. So I've got a son who's a Bengals fan for the NFL. And that same kid who's wearing the Buckeyes stuff, he claims he's a New York Giants fan. And we have watched a total of zero New York Giants games. <laughs> so I'm not sure where he gets this from. And now he told us he was an Ohio State fan. So my wife let him keep his uh, – old ratty Ohio State sweatpants that yes we got them I'm pretty sure not only were they hand-me-downs I'm pretty sure they went through an entire family of boys before they got to us because they are in bad shape yeah they look but, they look like from the 80s or something yeah but. they're pretty they're pretty rough they, I think they're also intended for like a two-year-old and our eight-year-old is skinny mini and he can fit in them but whatever yeah well uh, we need to so deal you're that. you're right after Ohio State beat Penn State this weekend that was a very I, I thought about it later that was not the most timely but it's one of my favorite pictures of him from recently so shut up um sorry no anyway sorry. we did we did have a lot of fun trick-or-treating fortunately it got cold and so that means we didn't have to be out for very long and the kids all got whatever a couple pounds each you know they had a nice full bag by the time they were done so it was fine yeah and uh, we did we do join it all into one big pile we're one of those families and then the kids kind of get it divvied out over the course of the next couple weeks yeah, you know every day they get some in their lunch they get some after school whatever maybe at nighttime if they're good 
So all that kind of stuff. It's not the kind of thing like when I grew up where you have your bag, that's your candy, and you eat it as you please. Like that. You eat it at your own pace. <laughs> that was kind of the way I grew up. But that's not what we do. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So anyway, it was fun. It was fine. Um, but we didn't watch anything spooky. We're not really big into that kind of stuff, as you and I have talked. Um, no, I don't care about but, that. But uh, yeah, didn't really care about that either. So there you go. That's what we did. But more importantly, more importantly, uh, a conversation you and I have been having recently via text is that it's time for me to upgrade one of my video game consoles. Yeah. And I'm, I'm feeling this more as, and I did start to kind of, I'll be honest, I did start to kind of feel this around the time I was playing Hitman. And I knew the PS4 Pro was out, and I knew it was it just was improved on the Pro. And then the Xbox One S came out. I think it had some improvements there, too. And I was kind of like, ooh, it would be nice to see this a little bit better looking because it's already a pretty game. And then when Horizon Zero Dawn came out, I was like, oh, this would look so good if I, you know. But I didn't want to, I didn't want to admit it. I don't want to admit that there's more money to be spent. So as time has rolled on, everything from Hellblade, you know, Horizon, playing through Mass Effect Andromeda, playing through Shadow of War, and now that I'm playing some Assassin's Creed Origins, it's making me think, all right, I've had this system since 2014, I think, that's when I bought it. Yeah, it came and out in 13, uh, and I think you said that you never, you didn't get it on day one. I did not get it day one, but I, I didn't get it too far after that, so pretty sure it was 2014. And I got to tell you, I think it served its purpose. Uh, I'm talking about the PS4, by the way, and I am leaning right now towards upgrading my PS4 to a Pro. But before I make that decision, I want to hear from you and let the listeners hear from you because maybe there's others who are in my shoes who this – maybe this holiday they're going to be looking for deals like I will be yeah. to see which which console to upgrade. But I want to hear you make a case possibly for the Xbox One X. I kind of just this at this evening jotted down a few quick pros and cons, and maybe you can help me fill that list out a bit. And then we might let the listeners help cast a vote on this, too. What do they think I should do? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to throw a wild card at you. I don't think Uh, you should go with either one of them. I think you should go with the Switch Pro X. The new Nintendo Switch Pro X. It's a portable PC. Uh um, VR. VR device. Right. Um, It's outstanding. It runs games in 50 million K. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, at uh, 75 frames per second. Oh, at 75 the whole time. Wow, yeah. it's locked at 75. Yeah, wow. it doesn't, even if it's indie trash, it stays at 75 frames per second. Interesting. So, Switch Pro KS <laughs> X, I mean, <laughs> Pro X, is probably uh, the way you should go. Uh, right. well, but on a serious note... Since no, one of the things I was going to say was, do I just sell both systems so I can buy more garbage games for my Switch and just go 100% Switch? I really think you should just do that. Because they're going to release Yono the Elephant too. You know they are. <laughs> and I'm well, going to need money for and it. And the thing is, is I figure you keep on this this pace of uh, Nintendo bot, botism... You will probably have a job at Nintendo within a year, and you won't even need to do this podcast. So you might as well just sell out, go completely Nintendo, and you'll probably be working at their, what do they call it, their treehouse or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I could totally see that. So probably you'll you. probably get a job since you live in Colorado, probably at the Nintendo Weed House. But you can work <laughs> for them and smoke pot all day like Jose Jimenez thinks you do. Um, I was just listening to Bill Burr make fun of Colorado about how they just have so much weed, but it's mostly white people who are smoking it, and all the minorities in Colorado are looking at the gross white people like, we work for them? <laughs> I do enjoy uh, Um he, Yeah, l- let's, I'll get back on topic. Terrible okay. joke about the P. I don't so know we're, what the damn we're, we're, So here, here's what's happening. I, I think I'm going to be able to, I don't think, I know I'll be able to upgrade one of these. I'm not going to be able to justify buying a four hundred dollar yeah. and five hundred dollar system. So I I want to make a decision. Do I I want to upgrade one or the other? That means I'll trade in my existing either Xbox One standard edition. It's a five hundred gig, or my PS4 standard edition. I currently have a two terabyte hard drive in there. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Do I just try to sell that straight up on Craigslist or something? You would have um, to because so. uh, GameStop. Like for instance, I know we talked about you going to GameStop and and making your purchase there. They won't take the any type of PlayStation that's been modified. So in order to trade it in with them, you would actually have to replace your two terabyte with your five hundred gigabyte. Well, which that's that okay with me. Comes up yeah. them, but, but whatever. And the the question I have on that. So let's talk about the PS4 Pro real quick. Um, would I be able to use that two terabyte hard drive in my new Pro were I to buy one? 
Yeah, you should be able to install it in there. Okay, so the Pro has a one terabyte, right? Yeah. Most of them do? Yeah. Okay. So if I wanted to, can I do external on the PS4? I haven't kept up with that. Is external available? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use external. I don't know why I'm pausing. Yes. So I could have three terabytes on the PS4 Pro if I did that. If I replace, because I still have the old 500 one. Yeah. Um, so if I formatted it correctly and got it swapped back in, you know, obviously backed everything up and then wiped the wiped the hard drive and had it ready to sell back. Yeah. In the, in theory, as long as, is there any kind of tab or something that I broke when I opened that thing up? The GameStop will be able to recognize that I did something. I don't it. think so. As long as it, it they when they test it, they can boot it. They're not going to look at the innards. So as long as it works as long and as there's works. no issues and they see 500 gigabytes, they're not going to question it. Um, so, so I'll let's, either do that, but I, I'm actually starting to lean a little more towards selling on my own. We can I can figure that out later. Let's, well, yeah, let's you can always use the, Facebook to sell it local and probably make more money, especially if you have two terabytes first. in it. Well, and people are going to be shopping uh, over the next three weeks, right, for Christmas stuff. So yeah. now's the time to post it if I'm going to do that. You know, maybe even throw one of my games and a controller on there and get a lot for it. So you broke down the pros and cons, and I was reading through them before, and I, I agreed with them. So let's go through them real quick, and then I'll kind of give you my thoughts on it, and then obviously you will make okay. your own decision. Uh, for the pro, it is cheaper, so it's 400 compared to 500 it okay. most definitely has more exclusive games. Nobody's going to debate that. And in that. 2018, the planned exclusives yeah. appear to be a much it's, bigger list. That's yeah. a huge selling point to me. Uh, more readily available to purchase? Mm, not really, because you're not going to be able to get a Scorpio edition, but you'll be able to walk in the store and get a regular Xbox oh. One X. That won't be an issue. Okay, so you don't anticipate there being diff There'll be no issue there. It. Uh, cons, less power. Uh, yes, technically it does. I think that the most difficult decision for me on, on this whole thing, and I probably would be selling you on the one X, not because I'm a fanboy, but mainly because I'm like, you're ultimately going to get more games at better resolution, better frame rates. But here's my issue. It's not dictated by Microsoft. All their first party stuff is going to be native 4K. And when I say first party, I'm talking about uh, developers they own. I'm not talking about IP they own. For instance, a lot of people bring up Quantum Break. Quantum Break's not going to be native 4K. They're not going to update it to that. Well, they don't own the studio that, that made Quantum Break. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so they sense. can't go back to them and say, you owe us this. No, that was Although never in their Although they could patch game. it, right? All right. So. so the point I'm trying to make is while all Microsoft's own studios and own games in those studios will be native 4K, most of them will probably be 30 frames per second, but you will get some that are going to jump to 60 frames. Like, for instance, Halo 5 is going to jump to – well, it was already 60 frames per second, but it's going to be native 4K with the 60 frames, and same with Gears of War 4. So those are really exciting things. Again, those aren't new games, and the stuff that we're seeing on the horizon, there's some good stuff in 2018 for Microsoft, but when you do a comparison, and you and I have pretty similar tastes on AAA games, it's not a competition. PlayStation blows it out of the water, out of – just the amount of games, and I would say just the excitement over the actual titles. Like, I'm more excited for some of the PlayStation games than the best ones on Xbox. Um, Not only are there more exclusive games, but you would add yeah. to that pro more that we care yeah. about, or that now, I would care about. On the PlayStation side, they do hit native 4K, but here's the thing: don't get deceived. The truth is, they only hit native 4K on older games, indie games. And some new releases that are smaller. They're not going to hit native 4K on probably any of their new titles that you've seen that are going to come out. It's probably okay, going to okay, be okay, okay. But will, but will Loco Roco 2 Remastered be native 4K? I hope to God it can do that. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm throwing mine out. I mean, I need that game. I will melt 4K. it in the fire if it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a lot of... Uh, like, for instance, I'm leaning more towards the Pro for you for the simple fact, here's the reason. It's going to be cheaper because not only does it cost less, you're actually going to get more value out of your old PS4 than you are your Xbox One. So you got to look at uh, that. Let's say yeah. you get $200 for your PS4, or even if you got $175. Yeah. Your, your, your difference there is 200 to 225 when you go buy the new mm. one. Yeah. If you sell your Xbox One, the most you're going to get... 
is 150 and that you're lucky if you get that gotcha compared to now you're going to buy a $500 system that being said my personal excitement is more towards and I own the pro and I'm getting the 1x is more for the 1x and here's why while hang on, it hang does, on. we're going to get to the 1x in one second let yeah, me just let me make sure we cover the pro cuz then I'm going to want you to if you can put on your your uh what we call it, the Microsoft fanboy hat, and I want you to try to co- pretend like you're trying to convince me for the pros to get the the One X. Okay. But before we get there, am I right in my last con there for the for the pro that there's no 4K Blu-ray player? Correct. No 4K okay. Blu-ray. Which player. Which currently, which is again, stupid. just like all things, not a huge bit deal to me right now. But who knows? In a year, I might be like, oh, me, but I wish I had. If you're not planning on buying both of these anytime soon. I think that needs to factor in. And the reason why is at some point, and I know you and your wife rent movies, they're going to be where you're going to go to Redbox and be able to get a 4K Blu-ray. It's going to happen. Um, or you're going to be able to stream in native 4K. That's going to happen. Um, but that's more down the road. The closer thing is your disc-based uh, based, uh, 4K Blu-ray. So while okay. it might not be All a right. huge selling point, if you find it's out Redbox for $3 a night is going to have native 4K Blu-ray disc for you, and you have a pro, that's kind of a little disappointing. So it is, to me, a selling point. Um, yeah. all right, all right, so let's talk about pro. the Xbox One X. Let's, let's get into this and okay. put on your Microsoft hat and try to convince me with the pros first, and then we'll talk about the cons. All talk right. to me about the pros for this Xbox One X system, which, by the way, comes out, by the time you guys are listening to this, like tomorrow. Yeah. Because will day. most of you will hear this on Monday, the 6th, and this comes out on November 7th. So um, tell me about this. All right, so it's definitely the most powerful console. Um, it's six teraflops, uh, whatever that means. Um, it does native 4K like we talked about on first-party games. That would be, the, again, the ones Microsoft owns, the de- developer studios. Uh, Best-looking third-party option, and then you put in quotes, probably. Um, yes, that was kind of what I was getting at. I think you're already seeing it with like games like The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 is already... Uh, and this is according to Dan Phillips. I actually haven't watched the video yet. I think it was Digital Foundry has already done a comparison between the Xbox One X version of The Witcher 3 and the PS4 Pro one. And apparently The Witcher 3, it's not only better looking, but it has more details, that type of stuff. So that right there is showing you the power. And that is a third-party developer. So I think it's important to understand that Microsoft cannot dictate what third-party developers do, meaning, let's use Assassin's Creed Origins as an example. If Ubisoft wanted to, especially since they are in a deal with uh, Microsoft, they could have made Origins better on the One X compared to the Pro. I don't think they did, and they probably did it to stay (laughs) in good relations with both companies. And that's where I I worry the most with the 1X purchase on the third party side is I'm like, am I really going to see a difference? Because that does matter to me. To other people, hmm. it, having a few more P's or running a few f- frames per second more isn't a big deal. For me, it is. If I'm going to pay $500, I want to know that every game that I buy on that is going to be better than Sony's. But I don't think okay. you're going to get that. Uh, okay. You'll get it on some, maybe a good amount. Um, they're already being pretty aggressive. I know Microsoft's being pretty aggressive, trying to get third party to jump on the bandwagon to really. Well, let's make a prediction. The first big, the first major third party multi console game of 2018 that I know of is Far Cry 5. Comes out in February. Do you think people who are playing this on the PS4 Pro and or the Xbox One X will have a different experience, at least visually? Visually, I would say yes. I do think you're going to see more of an impact visually than frames per second. I think they're going to try to keep everything even across the board for third-party games on both platforms. I do think just because it's naturally more powerful, even if they were to make the Pro and the X1 versions the exact same, same specs, I think when they actually play on the console, they'll actually improve. It's just like... um, these old games that are running on the Xbox One now, all these backwards compatible games, they didn't go in there and reprogram the games. They just formatted them to play on this system, and they're already naturally being improved. 
better uh, load times, better frames per second, clear mm -hmm. images like Knights of the Old Republic is clear on the Xbox processing One. Power, yeah, so it of, chug, uh, you know? because of yeah. the power. Yeah. So you okay. are going to get those benefits. I do think that is definitely a pro. You have your 4K Blu-ray. That's a pro. Cons. For a cheap butt like you, it, that extra $100 is... I mean, it's going to break the bank. You won't be able to afford another Ohio State. All right, no, no, hang, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I know I put expensive, but I put that for a reason. I, $100 is a difference. But I know that the PS4 Pro, for example, is going to have a Star Wars Battlefront bundle. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they're packing the game in with it. So you're getting extra value for that. Does the Xbox One X, to your knowledge, have any game bundle pack-ins? Or... I don't think they're going to do that. And the I Pro, think, more likely this holiday, yes. not only with Star Wars, I bet you we're going to see a number of different bundle options out there. Uh, Black Friday. So I, oh, I can't yeah. give you a heads up on this. You need to sell your PS4 now if you're going to do it because coming Black Friday, slim one terabyte PlayStation 4s, brand new, are going to be 200 bucks. So <laughs> you need to get rid of that now. But anyways... Yeah, I do think you're gonna get. I think you're either gonna get a PS4 Pro at 350, and maybe with a game, or you're gonna get the $400 bundle that might have like PS Plus plus a game. Um, so okay. yeah, there's definitely gonna be more value buying the Pro, but that's to be expected. It's been on the market for a year. It is well, that's the why lower I put power expensive. Console. It's more than just the hundred dollars. Yeah. I think there's more. There's actually more of a of a savings there. With the with the pro, yeah, good but, try there, Buckeye boy. Uh, <laughs> could be hard to find at, until after Christmas. We already you already about debunked that. this I think one. That yeah. One, yeah, that one's fine. You, uh, so you think okay? So if <laughs> I you think that if someone walks into a Best Buy on November 9th, they'll be able to pick one up. Well, you should go November seventh when it releases. And yes. I don't know, I'm just saying, what if you wait a couple days? You know, and you yeah, you, maybe you don't I get paid so. until yeah. the ninth or whatever. Okay. Who gets paid on a Thursday? A lot of people do. I get paid on Fridays, but some no, people do. Everybody gets paid on Friday. All well, right. I don't know anything. <laughs> Virtually I, no I have, Microsoft. I have so is, much money, I don't even know when I get paid. I, I love this so. con. <laughs> Basically, no Microsoft exclusives I care about. I, I'm just being honest. I think you care about more than you're leading on. I think you'll okay. care about... Um, now I'm, of course, sea of Thieves? Be, I think Sea of Thieves will be a good game. Maybe. I, also, I think... Um, what's the zombie one? Left, no, not Left 4 Dead. Uh, mm -hmm. The third person survivor one. See, I can describe it. I just can't remember the dang name. I'm it's a sure. sequel. Oh, State of Decay 2. Yeah, I think you'll care about State of Decay 2. It's Ooh, definitely going to run better good. on the One X. Yeah, maybe. And then I think Crackdown 3 is going to be a fantastic game. I know it's getting crapped on, but it's. I think it's going to be, when it comes out, I think it's going to be fantastic. It's probably better that thing went back in the oven for a bit, huh? Yep. So. so yeah, uh, 2018 definitely looks better on PlayStation, but it's not like there's nothing that's going to come out on, on Xbox. I think there will be some really good games. But you wanted me to sell you on the One X. It's plain and simple. The One X is the most powerful console. It is the one that has the most upside on most games. Um, third party matters. I always say this when people start bashing... Like, the joke was today, uh, I think it was uh, Moose said, uh, Microsoft makes Lamborghinis but gives you no gas. I get the joke, ha ha ha, but that's ignoring the fact that third-party games matter. And the fact that, again, we're talking about a, th uh, a third-party publisher in The Witcher 3 coming back and, and just making little updates. This didn't take them months and months. And they even said, this, I read the article, Microsoft helped us. That means Microsoft's being extremely aggressive. They want to have the best looking, best running games on their platform. They understand just saying, hey, we got the most powerful console, but the only games that you actually see it on is ours isn't going to cut it. They need to be able to say, we have the most powerful console. Far Cry 5 looks better, runs better. Um, uh, Destiny 2 Ooh. looks better, runs Red Dead, better. Red Bubble. Dead Redemption 2 is going to look better on it? Right? I have Microsoft currency that I'm saving up, and I'm already committed to the Xbox One X oh, with I'm Red excited Dead. about I think that it's going to be the best-looking version. Okay. 
I'm excited about that. See, I'm excited for Far Cry 5 a lot. And I'm very exci- even more excited for Red Dead Redemption 2. I'll tell you what. If you get the One X, even though I bought Far Cry 5 on PC, I will buy a copy of Far Cry 5 on the One X so we can co-op. Oh, boy. Mm, that co-op does look fun. If you, hey, by the way, if you guys haven't, for some reason, seen the latest trailer and latest breakdown of some of that stuff, go check it out. They've got some really cool stuff. They're doing for co-op for that. All but, right. And being all in all seriousness, I know we were playing around like, hey, sell me on this. I think the One X is the better value because okay. I told you this and I told you through text. Long term, too. Yeah. Not just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're looking at, and this isn't my opinion because I'm not an expert. I'm not Lee who I've talked to about PCs and the guy knows freaking everything. Um, but this is GameSpot who went out and bought parts that matched the Xbox One X's specs. So they didn't use their brand, but they used the exact specs of an Xbox One X. They bought the part and built a PC. It cost them $900. You're talking about a $900 plus because they got parts. If you bought it from Dell, you would pay $1,200. You're getting a $900 plus valued, and I'm saying value in the power, PC in this console. It is more powerful. The teraflops, I joked about it. It's over six teraflops. The PS4 is at a little over four. There's almost a two teraflop difference. To give you some understanding, my GTX 1080 PC is nine teraflops. It's about the equivalent of nine. So that's that's a big that's a big difference because I know my PC is going to be able to play these games way better. So. Um, gotcha. But yeah, I think the value is there for that console for future proofing. These are actually, you've actually made a pretty good case for both of these. And so here's what I'm going to do because I don't have to make the decision immediately. Yeah. Um, I want to hear from you, the community, you, the listeners. So let me hear your feedback. What do you think? Uh, is it the Pro? Is it the X? What do you think the best call is? And give me your reasoning for some of that. So give me some help. I need some help deciding which console to upgrade because i'm only going to do one to be realistic which one should i upgrade this holiday season so there you go that's the question i pose to you now i'll tell you right now our our uh our listeners are going to tell you it's for pro so you just need to listen to me because i know what the heck i'm talking about that's true most of our listeners are definitely sony ponies but we do have a few who are a little more level-headed who i listen to because they've got a balanced approach um so basically nothing like you uh, I'm very balanced. I was very balanced tonight. Uh, you were very balanced tonight. That's true. That's true. All right. So one of the things that we want to dive into, and I don't know if, if we actually have the capacity or really the preparation to do it tonight, because the more I looked into this in the last 30 minutes or so, the more I think this might require some more homework. Um, I want us to talk, and you want us to talk about microtransactions. Yeah. And I so, so I found this really cool article. I actually found a few of them, but one of them jumped out at me by a guy named Mike Williams. He just posted it last month on US Gamer, and it's the, uh, the harsh history of microtransactions. So um, we could try to dive into this now if you want, or we could try to put together a more full, fully-fledged conversation around this topic and really dive into it. But I am fascinated to, th- to go back and forth a bit on not only what are they, where did they come from, how did they start? You know, I like doing the history of some stuff like. Why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? Why don't we just um, in the last five minutes of this show because I've yeah. got a lot of distractions behind me. Yeah. Um, why don't we just state our current, I would say, uneducated opinions, just kind of our feelings on micro transactions and then as we'll we t- see take them a deep now. Dive later. And then I would like to actually do what you did like when we did the Sony show and the Microsoft show and that's like yeah. you broke out the history of everything and all that stuff. I think that would be a, okay. a pretty good idea to do something. It like might that. be one of those episodes building up to the game of the year talks when we don't necessarily have a game every week to talk about even though yeah. that might not work out. But yeah, okay. Well, let's do that then. Let's just give our kind of shortened versions just off the top of our heads, not knowing much about it. Let's just talk about the the last two questions I have there. I think it's down on the second page there. I want to talk a little bit about why people hate microtransactions right now, those who do hate them, and and should we worry? Those are the two questions that I'd like to to answer in our last five minutes or so. All right. You want to go first or me? I'll go. I'll go. go. I'll talk about why I think people hate them, and you tell me what you think about that. I think people hate them because – a lot of gamers view their this entertainment medium as 
almost like this pure form of entertainment that it's not been um they don't want it to be um poisoned i guess you could say or corrupted by big business and when it is when big business seems to be sticking their nose into the gaming world it really upsets a lot of people so i think that's the number one reason is they feel like money and business from people who don't care about games is overriding the passion and love for game worlds and game experiences i think that's the number one reason i'll just start with that what do you think agreed i'm going to add on to it a little bit and what i would say is i want to start without getting like into the history but as somebody when when i was younger and let's say there was just a game i really really loved the one thing i always said is i really really wish there was more of it you know i want more of this game um and i think while businesses are all about money and i do think they saw well there's an opportunity to make more money off this i do also think a lot of these developers were like yeah, we want to bring you guys more of the game. That's what you want. We now have the ability to do it. So I do think, in a way, it was kind of a natural, authentic desire of the gamers and the developers and publishers. I okay, think so that's over- the developer side, but why do you think people react to them the way they do? Well, I'm going to get to that. I oh, think sorry. it started out that way. You're building You're building up to yes. it. I just broke the trip. I broke your, your, your momentum. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm sure you're real apologetic about that. But uh, but basically, I think it started out that way. I think what's happening now is you've seen, and this happens throughout life, uh, when you look at when I was a kid, going out and playing outside was not a big deal. Parents encouraged it. Please, please get ice right now. Please get ice. Frick Can you get some more ice? It's probably Emily. Um, nope, it's not. It's not? Okay, get ice. Um, it's podcast super fan Eli. Yeah. So it started out natural, but I think like with everything, like I said, when I was younger, you could go outside and play. You had no worries about anything. And then what happened? People started stealing kids, doing terrible things, and things changed. It got, what, corrupted. And now, for me at least, while I'll let my kids play outside, I'm a little more paranoid. I'm not stupid. I'm not ignorant. I'm aware of what happens. Okay. And so the same th- way. it's the same thing with this is it started out natural. It started out as a good thing, but it's become corrupted. People have taken advantage of it. And when I say people, I'm talking about the developers and the publisher. And now they've planted a seed into the customer, us, the gamers, that this is going down a path where this is no longer about giving me more of the game that I love and making a little bit of profit. This is all about profit. And so what I'm going to actually do is make my game either harder, grindier, or loot-based to get more money out of you. And it does work. I'm not going to, again, while I have no personal issues against microtransactions, it does work. That option to get through something faster, to get to the end and say, I beat it, it works. Or the loot boxes where it's random and you got this opportunity to get that. For instance, I was doing, I don't spend money on it, but I was doing the Rocket League, the holiday special or whatever. And you you earn like, God, these kids are beyond rude, by the way. Like, seriously. But, um... But you earn, like, these candy corn. You can use the candy corn to buy these decryptors to open up loot boxes. But they limit the amount that you can earn. You can only earn three of them. Well, in these Uh, loot boxes is a bunch of loot, but you only get one thing. And so you get to look. It could could be like a new paint job or all these different things. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm looking through these loot boxes. I'm not going to lie. I'm not exaggerating to make some type of point. I was looking at this and I was like, I've never looked in these because I stay away from the loot boxes. And now that I can get something for free, I'm like, I kind of want to buy some keys because I want to unlock that car. I can only get that car in this loot box. Or and I for can- the record, I've been saying this about Rocket League since they put these special champion chests out or whatever they're calling them. Yeah. Since they've been putting those out, I'm like, dude, you should give everyone a little taste of what this is because I couldn't open any of them until I bought a key and I wasn't going to spend whatever, $3 on a key. But if they would have given me one, said, here's your first, here's your one and only mm-hmm. free key. If you want more, you got to buy them. 
then they may have gotten me to bite the bullet on two or three more keys, but they didn't. So I st- I'm glad to hear they're doing something where you can get a free taste. Yeah, that. they're doing it because I I've been playing it on PC and PS4, and I've I already unlocked one car. I've unlocked some wheels. I've unlocked some special stuff. They even have these cool, and it's been really cool playing Rocket League and seeing. You know, I know you love the like goal explosions. Oh yeah. Well, they have all these special explosions now. Like yep. one, one is like the Grim Grim Reaper comes out of the goal and like oh, swooshes so cool. up. And yeah, then, I, when I, the first one they introduced that was that was noticeable to me was the Batman one. I always thought that was cool. You know, the I have Batman not seen that one. one. I that have seen cool. uh, balloons fly out of it and pop, nice. and all, like yeah. it's just all this cool stuff. I'm like, yeah. I want that. You know, so. Like I said, getting back to my point, I do think it's it's the publisher and developer, more publisher than developer, their fault. They've they've taken advantage of it, they've corrupted it, and now you have a lot of paranoid gamers who are now extremely fearful, and it goes back to what you said, of you guys, and you guys being the publishers, taking away my hobby. Um, destroying it. Feels invasive it out of to some of us. Yeah. Like right. you're you're purposely manipulating and destroying my hobby so you can get more money, and it right. to a certain extent, some of them are right. The problem I have is that some of them are going way ass crazy because you got to remember this, and I'll make this as my final point, and I would love to talk about this later. These companies are in the business of being in the business twenty billion years from now. They're not in the business to rob you right now, get you mad at them so you don't buy from them ever again, but they can say, well, we got $800 million from you. No. So while they might not be on your side, they're also not against you. They understand that they cannot piss you off or take advantage of you or steal from you because if they do that, you'll never buy their stuff again. Yeah, and, and that's not will. to say that there's not selfishness in those high up, uh, you know, CEO meetings. There definitely is, but the thing yeah. is, their selfishness for the most part, those guys aren't in those positions because they're dumb. Their selfishness actually looks more long term than we give them credit for, and I'm totally yeah. with you on that. They understand the value of their brand, and they don't want to sully their brand just to make a bunch, a big wave of money now, because they know that when they have to answer for the for the revenue the next year, it's just not going to pan out because yeah. fans abandoned them. So I'm with you there 100. percent I think. People that people think they're cackling up there in the top of their tower with a big cigar hanging out of their mouth, that kind of thing, yeah, with this we evil made plan. All this money and they're never going to buy and, our games again. And, but and, and I don't, don't think care. that's. Yes, they care. I don't think that's their plan. That doesn't mean they won't make some dumb decisions along the way. I do think that for the most part, I'm not saying that they're all like great people. Okay, I'm not saying that there are some complete jerks. I'm sure in those yeah, yeah. in those roles. But all that to say, they're also not out to shut their business down. In five years, they're not trying to make all the money they can and then just drive it into the ground. So I totally agree with what you're saying. The big question that I would close us out with then is, um, and until we really dig into this, and I am looking forward to doing some of the history on it, but do you think we should be worried as gamers with where we are currently with microtransactions, where it used to be, you know, 10, 11, 12 years ago, it was horse armor uh, and a new hat. And now you get some of that, but you also have loot boxes and the ability to pay to win in some cases. Do you I think we say should be concerned. No. Okay. And the reason why is I think Battlefront 2 is a good reason. We have a voice. And Battlefront 2 is the one that I wasn't worried about Shadow of War. I mocked people on that. I thought that was stupid. But um, Battlefront 2 was clearly in the beta. I'm only judging it off the beta. Not what I think the the full version was going to be. Was pay to win. It was, okay. if you give me more money, you can actually finally unlock cool stuff. If you Because don't of some me, of the things they were including yeah. in the loot boxes. Yeah. And, and, and I know I think you're going here, taking, but they, they yeah. just announced a change based on feedback where they're removing one of their key star cards or whatever they're called, their yeah. elite item that you could normally get on a loot box. Well, they're removing that from there, and they're going to keep that separate. And yep. I think that's good. That's smart. They listened to their fans, and they said, okay, you don't want had to others to be able to pay to win. I have a feeling they probably saw cancellations of pre-orders. I really do think they, they saw some type of impact. And numbers do speak probably more than our voices, but that is part of our voices. So we have a voice. We have a voice with our wallet. But we also have a voice when negative PR matters. And so Great. if EA is getting bombarded with complaints and games media is whining as well, 
they're going to have to respond. They can't ignore it because that impacts their sales. And well, their and bottom. my short answer to should we worry is no. And it's a combination of what you said. I do think that companies will continue to adjust and not, I don't think they're going to completely jump the shark one way or the other. I think there's going to be a balance of some microtransactions, but not so much you can pay to win. At least when companies realize that's the successful formula is not to make it pay to win. They're not going to succeed with that. But <laughs> I just yeah. saw Eli busting a move in the back there. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. Um, Chunk in the funk. Yeah, bust the move. There it is. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, that's the cutest little dude ever. I love that guy. Chunk of the pot. <laughs> All right, I'll be off in a uh, minute. Stop pinching him. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I also don't think we need to worry because we we always talk about there's so many games. And that's the big key here. And I think there's going to be, we're going to keep seeing so many games. I don't think the game volume is going to slow down. And I think there's going to be plenty of pay to win games out there. They already are. Go look on the app store or on your Android store. There are tons of pay to win games there. And even on your normal Xbox or or Sony or Nintendo store, there's games where you can buy a bunch of microtransactions and pay to win. And so that option is there. But I think there are so many games coming out. There will continue to be a variety I'm not worried because I'm not seeing most games go that way. I'm just seeing sometimes they're dipping their toes in the water here or there. Yeah, they're going to test the market. Yeah. And if we say, no big deal, then they'll keep going. But if we go, no, enough's enough. I'll tell you when I'm my worried. Issue I'm, I'll was, be worried when Nintendo decides that if you want to jump in Mario, you got to pay a dollar, or get the Master Sword, you got to pay five. When we start seeing some yeah. of the classic kind of the trusted old benchmarks of gaming turn that way, then I would be worried. But yes. as long as we still have those types of experiences, where no, you don't have to pay for any of this stuff. We made this for you. Buy it one time and experience it all. I think we're going to still see lots and lots of that. So my initial reaction is we shouldn't be worried. Who knows? After we take a deep historical dive, we might both change our tunes a bit when we hear the way it's developed, you know, because it has. It, it's moved along over the last 10 years or so. so. Well, and, and the last thing I want to end on is, and I want to bring up Shadow of War again, because the the distorted view of, uh, of a game like Shadow of War, which has a single-player campaign, well, it is... Well, I can't say it's completely single player campaign, but it, it's that's predominantly why people bought it. Um, and yet they have these loot boxes, loot crates, and blah blah blah. And there was a lot of paranoia and outrage before anybody played the game. And then the big story after the game came out was, well, you don't get the true ending unless you buy all these loot boxes or you grind forever. Okay. Gotcha. Let me just explain real quick, and you finish the game, and I finish the game. There is a true ending that isn't the true ending that they're talking about. When you get to that point, you'll know you beat the game. And that's why I said in my post when I did it, I said I beat this game. There is more to it. I'll come back to it later, but I've beat the game. It shifts into a complete like MMO endgame style. You can totally tell. Exactly. It's basically like Destiny, like play our single player campaign now here's yeah. your in-game content now yeah. with this in-game content that you can do they do unlock a new cutscene that is another ending it adds on to the ending that's all it does right. it kind of just finishes it off the same way batman did it i beat what was the last batman that came out arkham knight i beat yes, arkham knight. knight but unless you do all the Riddler crap. The Riddler things, yeah. You don't get the ending. Well, right. guess what? I beat the game, don't care about Riddler, went to YouTube and watched the video, satisfied. <laughs> I beat the game. I don't need to grind. That's unnecessary grinding because it's just not fun. Shadow of War is actually fun. It's yeah. it's the game. You're playing the game. So yeah. if you don't want to do that, go watch YouTube. If you do want to do it, it's cool content that they add that's in-game content just to have fun and keep playing. So that's all Absolutely. I wanted to say. It's yep. a, The thing I get most mad at at the gamers is misinformation. They won't go seek out facts. They just right. run their mouths. And if you well, yeah, haven't just go, if you want an idea about, about this, me is I like facts. Yeah, well, just go look at the Metacritic user reviews, and you'll see exactly what Derek's talking it's about. All, I mean, it's all, what is it called? Echo Chambers. I haven't oh, played yeah. the game, 
but I heard this is terrible because of this. So and I'm so going to give it a spew. zero. Yep, and they spew garbage. They have zero thoughts on the game because they haven't played it, and they're not going to play it because they don't want to buy it because they feel like that's supporting well, this corrupt system. And so. Super Mario Odyssey is overrated because all you do is run and jump. We've done that <laughs> so before. So true. Eesh, that's you know that's one you. thing we forgot in our Odyssey review last week. We forgot to say that it's all it is is just running and jumping. We forgot that's to say you that. You just that's run all you do. It's just run and jump. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that wraps it up box. for this week. <laughs> I wish we had a loot box for Mario games. You know, then you could unlock I don't know Luigi. Like warp to ba- warp to the end ba- battle with spoiler Bowser, and oh. then. You can buy another loot box to just bypass the boss fight, and then I can just post on Facebook that I beat the game. There you go. For $25. Well, that does it for episode 96. Uh, We will regroup to talk about something in the realm of Assassin's Creed Origins and or microtransactions. More of a deep dive on the history of that. We'll get into both those things coming up over the next few weeks. And, uh, and whatever other games we're playing, too. Um, hopefully, in the next few weeks, I'll also give you an idea of how... Not only will Derek tell you about the 1X and what he's experiencing there, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about Doom on the Switch, I'm hoping, here in the next couple weeks, too. So we'll get into all of that and more. Thanks for listening. I know we picked up a few new listeners the last couple weeks. So thank you. Welcome. Go check us out on Facebook. You can email us your questions or thoughts or uh, or anything else that you want us to... We can share on the show if you want to fathersofthegrind at gmail.com. Or look up Fathers of the Grind on Facebook. We have a page as well as a private group, which you can join the conversation there. So thanks again. Uh, one last thing before you close it out, since we haven't been able to do the Assassin's Creed show um, when we wanted to do it. If anybody's on the fence, I'm going to tell you to go get it. Um, I know most of the internet is telling you to go get it. I will talk about it in detail in the next show, but 100% go get that game. Okay, because I've only played it for like an hour. I don't know what I think about it yet, but that's why I need more time with it before you and I take a deep dive. Oh, just buy a 1X and play more Origins. Gosh, I feel like I have to babysit you. The combat's not great. All right, we'll talk about it. We'll talk I, about I it. I have to buy loot boxes. Tim, <laughs> shut up. You don't have to we'll buy loot boxes. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week. Who is your daddy? I am the father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things here. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises?